Welcome to another episode. In this episode of our Discord dashboard series, we're going to go ahead and fetch the endpoint for guild configuration that we just created uh, from the React app. So that way we can actually get the actual information. So let me just go ahead and uh, go into the prefix page right now in the React code. Right now we're in the React code, not the backend code. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and well, instead of uh, uh, actually instead of working on this page first, Let's go into api.ts and let's first just create the function that will actually take care of fetching the guilt configuration. So we're going to go ahead and create a function called get guild config. And then it's just going to expect a guild ID. Because remember, we need to pass that guild ID into the route parameter. And what we're going to do is we're going to call axios.get. We are going to type annotate this in just a second. And I'm just going to do this right now. I'm going to go ahead and just label um, the API URL just so I don't have to keep on uh, hard coding this. So let me just do that real quick. Let me just fix that up real quick. Might as well. I should have done that from the very beginning, but I got a little bit lazy. So excuse me on that. Okay, so API URL. Okay, so we'll reference API URL. So that's going to be slash localhost or localhost port 2000 slash API. And this is just going to be, so instead of a, so the, the route is going to be, so slash API slash guilds. So it'll just be, yeah, it'll just be guilds. So now let's go ahead and create a type. Uh, and the type is really just going to be whatever the guild config type is. I'll just call it a guild config type for it for now. So it's going to have an ID, which is going to be a number, guild ID, which is going to be a string, prefix, which is a string, and then welcome channel ID, which is a string. Obviously, if you have other stuff that your bot does, you'll obviously um, modify your guild config type to whatever it is. To what it basically has to match the database. Okay. So we'll go ahead and import that type. Okay. And uh, we're not done yet. So it's the endpoint is actually slash guild slash config. And then we're going to have to interpolate the guild ID uh, parameter because we're passing the value of guild ID into the route. Okay, just like how we did it in the actual in the actual browser. Slash guild slash config and then slash the guild ID. Okay, so now we can go ahead uh, and call this endpoint. So inside the guild prefix page, what we'll do is we'll create a function called uh let's see i think actually no we'll actually do this inside the use effect hook actually because we want to perform this when the user initially um when, when the user first uh loads the page now i think it's better if we create a hook um a custom hook to manage this for us so we'll call use fetch guild config.tsx it's better, like I said, it's better to encapsulate all local state in its own hook. Whenever you can, that is. So this use fetch guild config is obviously going to need to take in a guild ID. Okay. Now, um, like I said before, we're going to assume, we're going to imply that this guild is going to be truthy. And it, it will be because remember, in app bar, um, it's always going to redirect to the menu if the guild in the context is undefined and the only way that we can ever reach guild prefix page is if um as if the guild uh if, if, as if the guild in the context is actually defined okay so we can easily just assume that the guild is there or the guild is truthy we'll go ahead and uh create a state variable called i'll call it just i'll just call it config config all you state as in the type annotation, which is just going to be a guild config type. Um, and I'll go ahead and create the loading and set loading variable. And uh, I'll just I'll I'll just omit the error for now because we're not really going to use it at the moment. Um, okay, so we'll implement the use effect hook. 
we'll go ahead and call uh, get guild config, and we're going to need to pass in an ID, obviously. So let's go ahead and take in a guild ID from uh, inside the use fetch guild config hook. We'll pass that in right over there. So we're going to use dot then and dot catch to handle the promise. So when we handle the promise, once it's successful, it's going to give us back uh, the guild config type. So by reference data, you can see that it gives me IntelliSense because we type we type annotated the access response. I'm going to console log it and I'm just going to call set config and pass in data. Uh, and then I'll call dot catch. If there's any errors, I'll just console log it. And then we'll use the finally to handle setting the state of loading to false, which means that when we initially call the callback function of the use effect hook, we're going to go ahead and set the state of loading to true, which indicates that an API call is, which in, which indicates that the API call is, is initiating right now. Okay. And we'll go ahead and return config and loading is like that. All right. Now to actually call, uh, it's actually called the uh, the API now. Um, so this is going to be a little bit tricky. The reason why I say it's tricky is because remember the this guild over here could possibly be undefined. And we can't call hooks conditionally. Um, so if we call use fetch guild config, um, and if we pass in guild ID like this, it's not going to let us do that because guild is possibly undefined. And remember, we cannot check to see if guild is truthy or not, and then call use fetch hook, uh, use fetch guild config hook, because that would be breaking the rule of hooks because they cannot be called conditionally. So um, I think what we're gonna do is this. So what I'll do is um, if guild and guild, if guild and then guild ID, or we'll just pass in an empty string. And what this will do is if the guild is undefined, then it'll just pass in an empty string. And that, that should technically fail all the time because it's going to call um, an invalid route. Okay, so it should just give us a 404 error. So let's go ahead and get the config loading. And I will go ahead and add the error state variable because now we actually have to worry about handling any errors. So... do that real quick okay so if there's any errors we will console log it okay even though the app bar is going to take care of redirecting it's still going to be problematic so we do need to we do need to check okay so if i refresh right now on the menu page let me click here okay so you can see right now that uh it seems like error is undefined which is good if I refresh, you're going to see that uh, error is, uh, let's see, there should have been an error. Okay, uh, I'm not sure why it didn't log the error inside guild prefix page. Uh, well, it, it tried to log error, but it said undefined. But okay, that makes sense because you can see right over here, it is in fact calling this guild's config route without the actual route parameter. And it says 404 not found, and that's not correct. Even if we passed in an invalid ID, it would still not work, okay? Uh, so then what happens here is it'll redirect back to the menu page, okay? If I click on here again, uh, let me go ahead and actually log config instead. So if I refresh the page right now, it redirects me back to menu. If I click on command prefix, it's going to give me the actual, uh, the actual uh, guild configuration, which is exactly what we want. So this is working, this is working great. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just do this. So uh, what we could do is, let me actually do this. Uh, I do wanna add a spinner though. Um, I do wanna add a spinner at some point, but let's not do that right now. What we're gonna do is for the input field, we're gonna add value and we're gonna add the value attribute and we're gonna pass in um, guild, not guild, sorry, uh, config dots wait what's going on why is config why is config not type annotated
Oh, there we go. I don't know why. I don't know why that was happening. Well, I think maybe because I had it like this. Okay, yeah, that's not good. Okay, config that prefix. Now this is gonna give us an issue because config could be undefined. So what we gotta do is just conditionally render everything. So what we could do is we can honestly just disable the field. Well, I want to do a couple things. Um, let me see. I want to conditionally render. Uh, let's see everything yeah we'll do this so uh let's do this so if loading or if not loading and config we'll use a ternary operator and we have two components so we have to wrap that in a fragment and then we'll go ahead and add a spinner if it is loading so we'll import flex We'll import the flexbox component we created earlier and we'll go ahead and import a moon loader give it a size of 30 color white and let's see let's try this again Okay, so I see that it is actually... It, I can actually see the spinner. Um, yeah, I can see the spinner. Let me go and do this. Uh, let me just do a simple set timeout. There we go. Perfect. So now that we've done that, give the user a better experience, we can now see the prefix over there. We can't modify it, obviously. It's not going to let us do that because we haven't uh, given it a function to update the state. So uh, let's see. I think what we're going to do is this. Uh, so we do need to modify the state of guild or of, of the uh, of the prefix. So um, I think what we're going to do, this is a little bit tricky because config can be undefined, right? So I think what we could do, honestly, is we could probably make it so that we can update config over here. Like we can probably, I think, yeah, I think the best thing to do is probably encapsulate everything inside this hook. So we can create another function inside here that can update config. And then we can create another function that will actually uh, save, that will actually update. I think that's the best thing to do because if I were to create a state variable right now, like, you know, for example, config state and then set config state, it wouldn't really make too much sense. And I'd also have to, uh, run the risk of config being undefined as well. So it doesn't really make too much sense. So I think the best thing to do is just create a state variable for that. So we'll do that in the next episode because I don't want to make this episode too long. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you all enjoy this episode and I'll see you in the next episode where we will actually update the prefix on the front end and then we'll actually update on the back end. So I'll see you all in that episode. Peace out.